Honestly, you're so mature, it's actually embarrassing. All right, cool, <laughs> but... Next. <laughs> Some. Anyway, next. Like... I know. Hey, come on, man. I haven't been second choice like three times, in it, so... That is... Did you hear what he just, just said? What? He said... Say that again. What did he Go say? Go on, what, what? Jess, what did he say? Go, Go on, on, say it. Go on. Come on. Go on, say it. I said you're the one that's been second choice like three times, isn't it? So. She's first choice now, like Bubba. Yes, she is. Honestly, fuck you, Kieran, generally. You wish. Well, the thing is, it's tick for tap. People give it and people take it, so it is what it is. You give it, you've got to be able to take it. Sometimes people say things that aren't very nice. I'm not being funny, she's crying. Ooh. Can you still be a high value woman if you've been promiscuous in your past? This is a sad question. I think there's so many people in the red pill community that are saying, oh, if you're not a virgin, then you're worthless as a woman, which is ridiculous. You guys probably know I'm not a fan of promiscuity. I think it's damaging to men and women, but I think it's particularly damaging to women. I know some women will be promiscuous when they're younger and then grow up and regret it. And I would say, forgive yourself like you would forgive a friend. There's no point in carrying that around with you. And it's not tied to your worth at all. If you're a human and you make mistakes, then you identify the mistake and you try and fix it. And you try to become the person that you admire. And that's all anybody can do. And if there are people in your life saying something makes you worthless, get rid of those people. Stop listening to the red pill stuff because it's not tied to your worth. Just try to be better every day and try not to repeat things that make you feel bad or that hurt you. The problem with a lot of marriages isn't that they've fallen out of love. The problem is, is they've stopped serving each other. When you're dating, all dating is is you serving them. You're so happy to do whatever they want to do. You don't complain. You don't gripe about taking out the trash. You, you take out the trash with a smile on your face. What you're doing is, is you're serving each other. If you aren't careful, the longer you stay together, the lazier you will become. And what happens a lot in a lot of marriages, you're not getting the service that you want at home, so you start looking like, oh man, he is so cute at work. Oh man, she is so amazing at work. What you're doing is you're looking outside your marriage for something that you're not getting at home. The key to great marriages is serving each other. It's not just serving each other to get each other to sign the contract. It's continuing to serve each other throughout your marriage. What's a high value woman? A woman who knows her worth and knows she can do better than that because there are men out there that aren't going to want to see a whole bunch of women at one time. But what determines a woman's worth? I think a woman determines her own value. See, that's the difference between men and women. Like, a man can't just determine their value. The world dictates how valuable you the are. The marketplace, you're saying. Right. Like, Capitalism. women could just yeah. make up how valuable she is in her head and then just assume that the world should follow that. But we can't operate like that. Imagine if I said, like, that, I, I'm just worth that. Like, why? Because I believe it. Everybody would think that I'm delusional, but women can believe that. I, I don't know. I think as a woman, you need to hold yourself to a certain standard to get the respect that you want. Some men feel that modern feminism and the changing roles of women have created confusion and diminished the value of traditional gender roles. They argue that as women increasingly prioritize careers and independence, traditional family dynamics, where men were typically the primary providers and women the caregivers, have been upended. This shift, they claim, has left men uncertain about their roles within relationships and families, as the expectations that once defined masculinity and femininity are no longer as clear-cut. My stepdad was my top subscriber on my naughty website. Now I know what you're all thinking, oh, stepdad fantasy, could have made content from it, blah, blah, blah. This man had been in my life since I was 11 years old and spent $2,000 on custom content every single video that I sent out. When I caught him, he denied it to all of his friends and obviously my mum got rid of him straight away. But yeah, if you want to talk about family trauma, my stepdad watched me have SEX with my partner for two months. Well, well, here is the custom content that my stepdad was requesting on my naughty site. 
like I said in a previous video, we messaged every single day on the website and he would make requests almost every single day. Every day? This gives a whole new meaning to every day I'm suffering. One of them was to see the underwear that I was wearing every day. At the time I was working still, so I was out of the house five days a week and he would ask for pictures in the bathroom or the change rooms of wherever I was. He also requested that when I was filming solo content at home that I would not do it in the bathroom or in the shower. He always wanted it to be on my bed or on the floor of my bedroom. Which mind you, he had access to this room every single day. So you're telling me that a woman has to go work like a man every day and a man goes work and he's tired when he gets home. A woman's not tired. She has to clean, cook, do the dishes, do the laundry. Are you kidding me? Why don't you want to do that? What are you talking about? Why don't I want to do that? You know how that tiring first, that is? Have you done that? First of Have all, you done that? I do it every day. First of all, <laughs> do not choose a woman who don't want to be a woman. Right. So you don't want to be pause, a woman. Wait, I just no, let you talk. You don't want to be a let woman. You talk. Yelling doesn't mean you're winning an argument. It's a sign of low intelligence. You can lower your voice and speak to me. I'm sitting right here. I can hear you. And you're yelling. Oh, all this, oh, I cook and I clean and I, yeah, that's part of your function. But when your tire is flat, my function is to make sure you have a new tire. But when that's your what car needs an oil change, it's my job to make sure these people ain't ripping you off. We have different duties and functions and responsibilities. And if you don't love your duty, your function, your responsibility, you're not fit to be a wife, period. This shift is believed to create dissatisfaction in relationships, as both men and women struggle to navigate these new expectations. The emphasis on career and independence can sometimes lead to conflicts over household responsibilities and the balancing of work and family life. Additionally, some men perceive that the empowerment of women has led to unrealistic expectations in relationships, contributing to a sense of instability and dissatisfaction. In Germany, if you did not know, it's really common here for when two people go on a first date that they split the bill. So like the woman pays her portion and a man pays his portion. And the other thing about that is that on the date, you are only going to pay for what you consume. So let's say I got a margarita for $8 and he just got water, you know, free water. When the total bill comes out, it's very common for the man or whoever to be like, hey, I didn't drink that margarita, so I'm not, I don't want to split it like that. I want to pay for what I ate. So I went to the internet to try to figure out why is it like this, you know, because th this is not like it, how it is in America. It's very different. And apparently I can't read because I can't come to understand why. Are you telling me you asked me out on a date? You told me I was beautiful. You invited me out to dinner. You're telling me how much you want to marry me and you want me to have your first children. And you tell me when the waiter comes out with the bill, after you said you was going to build a house with your own bare hands for me, and the waiter comes out with the bill and you look at me like this. So are you going to pay? What? I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to find someone that makes them happy. I want everybody to live a beautiful life that they want for themselves. I don't wish ill on anybody, but can, can, I do. I can't stand the delusion. Now we all got to sit here and we got to be like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, this is somebody who could get 95 percent of guys. And imagine going through life with that sense of delusion like we see it. And this is an extreme example. But when women walk around like that, imagine walking around thinking I could get 95 percent of guys. How many guys are you telling no to because you think you're better than them? Are you or is it in your head? Just think about it. If you don't want to wind up alone, you have to have a, a, a realistic assessment of what you bring to the table, of your looks, of your capabilities, of what you're willing to do in a relationship, of your character, all of it. Men always just want virgins that have hadn't had to anyone and are really good girls. Like you want younger women as well, so it's like that whole predator vibe. So what if I said women. women are stupid, can't make money, short and weak because they want a guy that makes more money than them, taller than them, more confident, ambitious, etc. That would be ludicrous, wouldn't it? We don't shame female preferences. Okay? When a woman says I want a man that's tall, makes money, etc. You go girl, you deserve it, that's your preferences. If I say I want a girl that's not a hoe, that has some sexual temperance, isn't going to embarrass me when I walk in a room, beautiful, young, etc. That's considered, oh, that's, that's toxic and masculine. We demonize male preferences, but we don't demonize female preferences.
For these men, the evolving roles of women present challenges in navigating relationships where gender norms are more fluid. The traditional sense of being the breadwinner, protector, or leader in the household is no longer as relevant or necessary in many cases, and this shift can lead to feelings of inadequacy or a lack of purpose. Uh, let me just get the door for you. Okay. He got me at the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. I ain't getting out this phone. Mm -mm. Yes. Uh, would you want me to open the door for you? Look at, look at Are you? You're recording me? Yeah. Yeah. This is the Cheesecake Factory. This is the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. What's the problem with that? This is a chain restaurant. Who takes someone that looks like this to a chain restaurant? You want to talk about it? I'm... I'm fine with talking about it, uh -huh. even in front of them. Oh okay. yeah, I want to talk about it. Yeah, come okay. on, get up on in the car. Yeah, we gonna talk about it. <laughs> ex boyfriend, so. <laughs> Wait, ex boyfriend? Yo. She calls us friends, but I don't consider us friends. What do you guys consider each other? Technically still figure it out, but I'm the one she calls when she needs to cry. I've tried. It's a work in progress. It's one, so is everything. It's one work in progress. So you guys are just trying to work on things? See how it goes. I'm trying to work on things. <laughs> if he gave you a guilt-free pass to sleep with anybody in the world, would you use it? Yeah. On who? Zac Efron, Josh Bowman, some celebrity, hot celebrity. You turn that down? Mm -mm. Couldn't do it. All right, what if it was all the way around? I know what I'm worth. One night with one celebrity doesn't change who I am. So you wouldn't use it? Even There's if I no gave point. it to you? No, because it's it, it sounds like a trap. If, if, if your significant other is willing to give you a one night and a one night stand with anybody in the world, it sounds like a trap for your loyalty. F no, fuck that. While modern feminism advocates for equality and challenges rigid gender roles, some men feel that their own roles have been devalued or lost in the process. They argue that the balance between independence and traditional partnership expectations is difficult to strike. As a result, the evolving dynamics between men and women continue to spark debate on how both genders can redefine their roles while maintaining fulfilling relationships. So last night I ended things with a guy that in one of my previous videos I had referred to as the most intentional man I've ever spoken to. It really does suck because he truly is amazing, um, has a lot of the things I'm looking for in a person, um, but we hung out like six or seven times and I just wasn't feeling it. And it's just really a shame because he really is a great guy. If he had asked me for more details, I really don't know that I would have been able to give him any besides that shame, but there's really nothing you can do. It's just the name of the game. Now look at the difference between these two women. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poor. For poorer. <laughs> Just keep going. I think we can keep going. <laughs> All right. I'm 
forever submit to you, Miles. I'll forever respect you, Miles. I'll forever honor you, Miles, as the head of our home. In heaven, they hear. <laughs> On earth, I declare and decree, I shall be a submissive wife unto you. I don't know about you, but I know which one. There is a perception among some men that modern women are more entitled, demanding, or difficult to please. This sentiment is often fueled by media portrayals and personal anecdotes, leading to the belief that modern women have unrealistic expectations in relationships. So what about the women that didn't choose to raise a kid on their own? Of the 50 plus percent divorce rate, women are filing 70, 80 percent of our divorces. Women are choosing to wreck their own homes every day. Men are not choosing to wreck their own homes and make women single parents. That's a choice that women are making. Uh, why? Because their husbands are trash, treating them badly? <laughs> yeah, the, okay, now, you, now here we go with the ad hominem stuff. This is the same stuff that's been piped into the culture forever. That when a woman chooses to break her home, it's always the man's fault. Get all your stuff and get out. He wasn't, he wasn't the one to say that shit. Deuces. Deuces. Deuces to you, bitch. Yeah, get out. You already kicked out. I'm going back to Angie. Uh, no, you're not. Yeah, I'm going back to Angie. No, you're not. Tell Stefan go. Angie's coming back. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, you know, she lasted probably, what is it, five days? Not a week. You know, a week. Yeah. A week, seven yeah. days. A week. And she's already gone. tooted and booted. I would go to these frat parties. I would guys whatever there was this one night though and i was like hey you know i talked to them all individually i'm like hey so i'm gonna just be waiting in this closet i don't even care about the party i'm gonna be waiting in this closet it's their laundry room and just like come in whenever and f me like i'll just sit here and be like a human doll basically so anyone you didn't care who no i didn't i was like just i'll be in this closet like come f me if you want if you get home um i was on birth control i let them all f me huh she belongs to the streets. Something is wrong with you. Did I ask you to wash the dishes? Man, I come from Jamaica for wash dishes. I wash care. I come from Jamaica for make money. Yeah? Well, I'm working, and I asked you to wash the dishes. Were you still interested in your green card? Yeah, babes, never do wash your plate them right now. Yeah, yeah. No wash That's what I thought. And wash my car when you're done too. Okay, okay, babes. When you make your claims or you shoot your shots and a woman comes down and she marries you without even trying to get to know you you're saying to yourself i hit the jackpot but sometimes you didn't hit the jackpot what you're going to find when you finally arrive wherever foreign country you want to be at is that a lot of you are going to be married to people who are mentally ill now not to be disrespectful or anything but in our country they'll say mad so you marry a woman and when you're in jamaica you're on your best behavior or oh, she's on her best behavior until you reach and some of you after you arrive in these foreign countries you wish that you had stayed in jamaica and suffered because the hell they put you through so here's what i'm saying to you if you are going to go on these impromptu you know marital agreements Please know that when you go to foreign, you have to be prepared to walk some dogs. You have to be prepared to wash some underwear. Now, Jamaican men, that's not to say that they won't do these things for their partner, but they don't want to be forced to do it. And a lot of men, when they arrive, you know, they realize that they have to sleep in the same bed with dogs. So a lot of men, after they go through the immigration process and they arrive and they're so excited when they come, they stumble up on what appears to be prison bring card bros men need to recognize that many women exhibit behaviors perceived as unstable and the notion that she's not yours it's just your turn reflects a widespread sentiment women initiate divorce 80 percent of the time and the adage you can't turn a hoe into a housewife resonates with those who have experienced betrayal Countless men have felt the gut-wrenching pain of discovering infidelity from the women they love, who cheat and break hearts, shattering trust without hesitation. Imagine thinking that it was a bad thing, by the way, for a man to say that it's their job to take care of women. Remember when that was noble? 
Do you remember? I don't remember when, when the Titanic was sinking. I don't remember all the women complaining that they were on the boats first with the children. No, no. Were they like, no, no, I'm staying here. Men, you take the boats. I've got this. No, because that would be weird. That would be, make no sense, right? And now we're warped, right? So this now, now we've been programmed as women to think that when a man says, it's my job to take care of a woman, you're supposed to be offended by that. Instead of say, saying to yourself, well, that's a, a fundamentally decent man that thinks that's his job and is going to work his butt off to make that happen. Warped society. Don't play the game. I don't know if I'm just making this up or if it's just my intuition, but I have this feeling that the guy I'm seeing at the moment, he's getting off and having his little ego stroked by the fact that his housemates have heard us. I don't know if it's legit or not, but there's just some things that I'm just questioning. Like, he never tells me if there's other people in the house and he never tells me to keep it down or anything like that. And when I ask, are there people here? He'll say no at times, but then there are. And then when we go downstairs, they kind of make these weird eye contact with each other and they're like, hmm. And it's a very boy club because it's a bunch of dudes living in a house together. And he seems insecure. Like it seems like it's like an ego thing, but I'm not too sure, but it's weird. And I don't know. So I just watched a video of a girl where she said that she got very humbled because she went on a date with a guy and she said on the text messages he was very flirty. In real life, when they met, he wasn't as forward and that the date went really well. She said they were out for two hours, they went for a walk, they went for a coffee. And then she said she bluntly just asked him, why is he more flirty on text messages than he is in real life? He then humbles her and he says, I think you're a very pretty girl. However, you do look a little bit different than your pictures. That's my opinion now, but I have enjoyed our date, but I do think it's more of a friendly vibe. All the comments are roasting this guy, being like, oh, but he's a war red flag, you dodged a bullet there, and all this, right? I don't see anything wrong in what he's done. He's been very polite about it, he's went on the date with you, and you've asked him a question and he's told you the truth, but because it's an answer that you don't wanna hear, you then come to TikTok for loads of people to then roost this guy, when, fair enough, you haven't put a picture of him up, thank God, but he's done the right thing. Some guys, I've heard stories where they'll meet up with someone and they'll leave them in a bar or a restaurant. Some people I know have driven off from people when they've just been stood there waiting. That's the wrong way to deal with it. How this guy handled it, I think was correct in my opinion. And I know this because I want you to use a lot of filters on dating apps. And when I met up with a guy once, you could tell he was not interested at all. And then he texted me and he was like, I think you look a little bit different in your pictures. I was humbled. I never used proper full on filters ever again. I might use like a smoother filter or a tan filter, but I never used one that made me look like a completely different person because I was humbled. And how that guy done it and how this guy done it was perfectly correct. So I don't know why I just don't get with the comments why women are so against when people tell the truth. They catfish guys and then get angry when the guy doesn't want to see them again because they don't look the same as they did in their pictures. It's shocking how easily loyalty and commitment can be discarded. These actions undermine family values and leave a trail of broken hearts, questioning the integrity and character of those involved. This disillusionment with modern relationships is a significant reason why the MG Tao, Men Going Their Own Way movement exists, as men seek to protect themselves from such emotional devastation. Guys don't like to think about women haven't been with anybody before them. At all. Like, no one at all. They prefer to just be like, the vagina was closed before they got there, and then it opened, and now it's in process. <laughs> like, they just can't, they can't, they don't want to visualize it. It's very uncomfortable for them to do that. So the more partners you've had, the more you start to seem like an open 24 hours, seven, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 7-Eleven. They're not into it. It's just is also, if they're looking at you seriously, they're looking saying, this could be the mother of my child going to be pregnant like you just it just it's a clash like promiscuity and that family life, it's just a clash in their head they don't like it people meet people nowadays being a single gal in a single world where do i go if i don't want to go on dating apps like i don't like dating apps i've had them i've tried them i get disappointed i get discouraged it let's be honest let's be real dating apps 
If you're going to think this person is attractive, you're probably going to swipe yes. And if you don't find them attractive, you're going to swipe no. But sometimes people just aren't photogenic. They just don't present themselves well through photos. That's why I just feel like it's so much better to meet people in person. Also, just like with having dating apps, like it just feels forced. And I don't want it to feel forced. I want to like go out in public, meet someone like in the wild both just happen to bump into each other and you're like and then you know sparks fly that i just want to know where like where do the single men go where are you going where are you hanging out because, like if you're in the garage like come out like are you at the lake are you snowmobiling are you fishing it's winter time what are you doing right now <laughs> it's funny how am i this amazing like and single like are you kidding me and like for the longest time i just like wasn't worried about it at this point i'm like i'm 31 what is happening like is there just no one left put me on a dating show the bachelor the bachelorette love island i don't even care just put me somewhere so i can actually like interact with the male race i'm not interacting with males <laughs> anyways let's <laughs> love comes to you when you least expect it shut up i have been trying to not expect it for like six years and also i was speaking to my friend the other day and she was like well like are you like trying to like go out of your way to meet people i'm like no because people are fucking telling me that it comes when you least expect it so here i am like trying to convince myself i don't want it and i'm just not expecting it so i can get it and it's not happening but then even when i go out of my way to like go on dating apps it just never works because these people that i'm meeting aren't my cup of tea are not wanting what i want they just want a casual thing and like as as someone who's never been in any kind of romantic entanglement i'm my first my first relationship is not going to be a fucking casual relationship and yeah so like what one is it should i put myself out there or should i just pretend that i'm not like oh i don't want a boyfriend All right. the sexual liberation movement which is part of modern feminism has led some men to believe that women are less interested in long-term relationships and more focused on casual relationships. This perception results in men viewing women as less suitable for serious, committed partnerships. Ask A man will lose interest when he sees that he is trying way harder than you. It literally doesn't matter how pretty you are, how happy you are, how successful and confident you are. You will lose him simply because you are not giving him any effort. I believe, you know, the man is supposed to be the breadwinner. Okay. Uh, we, I would like to, like, talk about... You know, maybe having a, a weekly allowance or something. Okay. How much was the yeah, how, how much would be a, you know? So how much is a weekly allowance? Like my my last relationship, you know, he was giving me like two, three thousand every week. So Isn't it funny how some women associated providing men with money and money only? Whatever happened to a man providing information, education, guidance, advice, or even behavior improvement? Do you know why some women consider a man giving them money being the provider of the relationship? Because that is the only thing they would accept from a man. A lot of modern women, they don't want no guidance. They don't want to be told that they need to do better as the female in that relationship. How could that woman from the previous clip, I'm not judging her. How could she be an asset to his life? How can she bring improvement to his life? Actually goes for a lot of women out there. A lot of women, they are so cool and so content with spending a man's money that he clearly works hard for and don't even pack the man's lunch. Girl, please. These women, they don't even want to, they don't even want to master the basics in a relationship. They don't want to cook. They don't want to clean. They don't want to do none of that. They just want to sit there, be pretty and spend the man's money. And what kind of world do you live in, honestly? And especially what are you going to do when you get old? Whose money are you going to spend then? You're going to be alone and ugly. I'd stop him. So I would prefer someone who's over six feet. Honestly, I mean, definitely over six figures. You gotta be six feet, six figures. So a man that made 80,000, that's too, that's, that's not No, not, not at all. What, where, why are 80,000 not enough, bro? I know me, I know my lifestyle. That's just not going to cut it. We're not gonna go out to eat how I want. We're not gonna be able to travel like how I want. We're not going to be, it's just going to be too many like limitations and I don't like that.
Okay, so where does she want to go out to eat? That's going to require a man to make six figures. Are they going to be eating salt bay steaks three times a week? And he has to be six feet tall. No, not, not 5'11", six feet tall. It's the triple six. These modern women want the triple six. That's six figures, six feet tall with the six pack. And 80K is not enough. Nope, has to be six figures. Nothing less because that would be breaking the triple six. We have to keep the triple six. I am a woman and I want equality. Go, feminist, go! Us women want to make as much as men? Exactly! We can do anything a man can do. You go, girl! I think it's about time we work longer hours. Female empowerment. We want to work more dangerous jobs. But wait a minute. We want to start providing for our own children. But you don't mean financially, right? It's time that we protect and provide. I can't lie, you're losing me. A woman can do anything a man can do, so we want recognition that a man can be victimized too. Okay, clearly you're not a feminist, you're a misogynist. What kind of equality is this? I'm a victim! Cultural shifts towards gender equality have been met with resistance by some who prefer traditional values. The push for equality and empowerment of women is sometimes seen as a threat to men's traditional roles, leading to a backlash where modern women are unfairly labeled as worthless. And you are in the dating marketplace at that time when that happens, say you're 37, 36, 38, 40, whatever it may be, and you are still on the hunt for that man and you hit the wall and you can see in your face that you are no longer the face that you were at, what, whether it was 30 or 35 or 25, whatever it is, you are going to be panicked because now you know that you are going to compete with women who are younger, who are largely more fertile, not always, but largely speaking, yes, who have that youthfulness to them, who have that estrogen, progesterone, whatever the hormonal balance is that makes someone young, it's there and you're losing it. And you become hyper aware of that. And that is why women begin to panic. You know what I want to talk about, you guys? So I live in New York, specifically Brooklyn, and I be outside, you know, enjoying summer as I should. And I've been going to the block parties, all of that good stuff, you know, the day parties has been a time. But the problem is the men just stare at you. They just stare at you the whole time. They don't approach you. They don't want to get to know you. They don't want to, oh, do you want to drink? It's just a staring contest the whole time. I'm trying to figure out how am I supposed to meet my future husband if the men are not approaching? Because I'm not approaching a man. Like, it's giving the men want to be chased now. That's what it's giving, and I don't like it. The economic independence of women is sometimes seen negatively by individuals who believe it undermines men's traditional role as providers. For some men, the success and independence of women can feel threatening as it challenges long-standing gender norms where men are expected to be the primary breadwinners. This shift has led some men to perceive financially independent women as less desirable partners as they no longer fit into the conventional dynamic where men are relied upon for economic stability and leadership in relationships. Damn. Yeah, I can't lie, these kind of all sound like this, that sounds like a miserable marriage, and those all sound like rules that you made up to benefit you. Um, just me? It's raining outside. Isn't that lovely? Thank you. I'll be damned, your shit. The rise of women in the workforce and their ability to provide for themselves can be seen as a disruption to traditional family structures, creating discomfort for those who still value conventional roles. For these men, the notion of being the provider is closely tied to their identity and self-worth. So when women demonstrate equal or greater economic power, 
it can lead to feelings of insecurity. Because if I could explain to anybody how lonely pregnancy is, I, I can't put it into words. I'm just so like, <laughs> you let him hit it raw. You didn't have second thoughts. Now you're a single mom. Now you're a single mom. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.